so back to our top story. Brett Kavanaugh says he will be there to testify first thing Monday morning. But as far as his accuser goes, the signals have remained mixed tonight. Um, in fact, just moments ago, I was looking at uh, something that says that they're still in discussions. They're still trying to get the parameters down for how this would work next week. Here now, Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of DailyWire.com and the host of the Ben Shapiro election special, which starts this Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on the Fox News channel, which we are all looking forward to um, having been with us through the midterm. Ben, good to see you tonight. Thank you very much for being here. Good to see you. Um, you, know, I know you, you talked a lot on your podcast uh, today, yesterday, about what you see as a lot of injustice that feels inherent in this um, in terms of how this whole thing has been approached. And there's a lot of questions that are being raised tonight about who might have sort of jumped into the fray to help this woman and to get involved in her case and what their motivations might be. And there's a story by Politico later on, later this afternoon, which suggested that a woman named Ricky Seidman uh, is advising her. And of course, she's allowed to have anybody she wants uh, advise her. It's a free country. But it is interesting to note that Ricky Seidman also helped someone else in the past. Let's watch. On September 6th, Ricky Seitman called me. She told me that she knew someone who worked on the, the Senate Labor Committee, James Brudney, who would have information, who had worked in the areas of uh, sex and sex discrimination, and that he would be able to give me some indication of the law. What do you think about that, Ben? Well, I mean, obviously, there is a political attempt here. I mean, the, the, the fact that the accuser is now going to a woman who was working with Anita Hill in the Clarence Thomas trial doesn't speak highly of the sort of nonpartisan element in, in this whole case. And that's what's been so troubling. Whether you believe the accuser, whether you don't believe the accuser, the Democrats have made it nearly impossible to just look at this as a question of guilt or innocence. It looks like a political smear. There's just no way around it. The way that Dianne Feinstein handled this, she first saw a letter July 30th, she didn't reveal it to anyone else for six weeks. And then finally they come forward two days after Brett Kavanaugh finally finishes his hearing, six, seven days afterward. That's when we finally hear the entire story. When she first referred the story, she didn't actually give the name of the accuser. She didn't give what actually happened. The accuser still can't give a date or a time as to when this happens. Makes it incredibly difficult for Brett Kavanaugh to even defend himself. And meanwhile, you got Democrats saying, well, we want to hear her story. And then the minute Republicans say, well, why don't you just bring her, you know, like in front of our committee so we can hear her story, then Democrats say, hey, that's sexist. It's sexist to want to hear her story. So if they don't hear her story, it's sexism and silencing yeah. her. If they do hear her story, it's then sexism and silencing her. And then somehow her. they're bullying it's, her. Right, um, and and, and then know, they throw it in front of the FBI, yeah, as though the and, FBI and is some sort of magic her, time cop. They've offered her a, you know, a private, anything she wants, really. You know, However she wants to convey her information. They've said they'll go to California. Um, they want to make it as open and accessible a process for her as, as they can. And they're in those, those negotiations tonight. I, I'm just shocked, you know, sort of given the history that we've seen in these cases. And, you know, you've pointed out and I've pointed out, we don't know what happened. Nobody knows what happened in this case. And, you know, obviously that's the most important underlying factor of what's going on here. But I'm shocked when you look back at like the Duke case or the UVA case and some of these cases that have unraveled that people are so willing to jump in with their opinion, not knowing her or not knowing anything about the actual facts. Watch some of this that was released today in, in support of the accuser. He should not be confirmed. He should not be confirmed. He should not be confirmed. You and your testimony are credible. You and your testimony are credible. You and your testimony are credible. We believe you. We believe you. We believe you. Ben. And my gardener says that she's not credible. Who the hell cares if a bunch of celebrities <laughs> who weren't in the room and haven't been anywhere near that side of the country for a while have to say about what happened here? I mean, what, what exactly light do they have to shed on any of this? It gets even more absurd than that. We've seen two interviews in the last 48 hours from people who are in classes with Christine Blasey Ford when she was back in high school saying they believe her story. And then when specifically asked whether they actually heard about this, they say no. Do they know anything about Brett Kavanaugh? No. But they believe her story because bad things happen to them. Well, that's not a standard as to whether you know something bad happened in this case. The, the idea that justice, truth, and, and guilt and innocence, that these things can be decided simply by appeal to men are bad and women and must always be believed. It's absurd. You have to have some standard of evidence before you destroy a man's life. You at least have to give him the chance to defend himself. Democrats are now saying things like, if he even defends himself, he's insulting the woman. 
Anna Marie Cox, right, over at Wong Cannon on MSNBC, she suggested that it doesn't really matter whether Brett Kavanaugh is guilty or innocent. What really matters is whether he feels this woman's pain. Yeah. Well, if you're Brett Kavanaugh and a woman just accused you, in your yeah. opinion, of sexually assaulting you falsely, sexually assaulting her falsely, are you really going to be sitting there thinking about her level of pain? Or are you going to think, be thinking, I need to defend myself. I have daughters. I have a wife. I have a life. This is all insanity. And again, it's demonstrative of the fact that if we really wanted to get to the truth of the situation, if Democrats really gave one crap about this, what Democrats would be doing is putting this woman in front of a hearing, calling whatever witnesses they could, and then they would be attempting to bolster her case. They wouldn't be hiding her and then suggesting that any questions to be asked are somehow undermining the justice system. Ben, thank you. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday night. Good to see you. Thanks so much.